Some people are just born at the right time, their life and work striking a responsive chord with those of us from a similar place and time. American Masters profiled one such individual, the singer-songwriter Paul Simon. If I were black, a black artist, I don't think this would have happened to me. I think the main reason that I was being criticized was because I was white. Too long, artists have went and stolen African qualities in their music. It's nothing but stealing. It ain't nothing but stealing. First of all, I was invited there. I was invited by black musicians. They had a very specific purpose. They wanted to get their music out. They wanted money. Money. Yes, but that's an absolutely valid reason. You listen to this record. You try and make a hit out of that. You think it's easy to make a hit out of it? You think you can just listen to this and then go and say, oh, I know, I know a great idea. I know a great way to steal some money. I'll go to South Africa, I'll listen to some Sutu music, and I'll come back here, and I'll, make, uh, and I'll write a song, and I will make money off that. We, as South African musicians, we were using him more than he was using us, if ever there was any word like using because here we were isolated from the world and trying really hard to get involved in the international community and it wasn't happening and then suddenly there was this guy who was known and was writing beautiful words and i thought that maybe if we mix our rhythms with his thoughts we might get some kind of musical osmosis which would simply like say this is the direction of the music she don't try to hide it. He's a poor boy, empty as a pocket, empty as a pocket, nothing to lose. Here to accept is Susan Lacey, executive producer of Paul Simon, born at the right time. Thank you. Uh, six weeks after I first met with Paul Simon to discuss making a film about him, uh, my crew and I boarded a plane for Japan to begin an extraordinary world journey with this great musician. Uh, aside from the fact that such a short time made certain visas unattainable and we had to literally sneak into China, anyone who knows anything about public television funding knows how virtually impossible it is to move with that kind of speed. But we did. So I'd especially like to thank the leadership at uh, WNET, my station, uh, for going out on a limb, uh, trusting me, and allowing me to produce this film uh, before all the money was raised. I also wish to thank Brian O'Doherty of the National Endowment for the Arts, Rosalind Walter, and PBS for their continuing stalwart support of this and the other 68 films to date in the American Masters series. I am truly grateful. In China, we had the opportunity to, first, to film the first concert, imported concert, uh, there since 1945. Uh, only recently liberated from the Cultural Revolution, we saw thousands of Chinese citizens who miraculously knew all the words of Sounds of Silence and sang along in Chinese. I knew from that moment that we had a chance to capture and actively convey something very important, something beyond the mystique of personality. Over and over in South America, in South Africa, we witness the same thing, the power of music to act as a universal communicator, to unite, to heal, and even however inadvertently to be a force in the political struggles facing many people today. Great art always operates on many levels. We tried to capture that in this film. And on behalf of my co-creator of the film, Susan Steinberg, and myself, I'd like to thank the Peabody Committee for recognizing our work with this very great honor. Thank you.
I just want to thank you, and I want to thank Susan Lacey for giving me this opportunity to do this piece of work with her. It was a great honor, and thank you very much.